The Kenilworth LRT Tunnel is a 2,870-foot structure that stretches from just east of West Lake Street to just south of the Cedar Lake Channel. Once constructed, the tunnel will run under Cedar Lake Parkway as well as the Kenilworth Trail. The tunnel is being constructed using a cut-and-cover method, where a trunch is first excavated to construct the tunnel, and after the tunnel is constructed, it is then covered up. The tunnel is divided up into 30 segments or cells that are generally 100 feet in length. There are different construction activities going at any one time in seven consecutive cells, creating a work area over 700 feet long. During the excavation phase, soil is removed from three different cells simultaneously, and the contractor installs a series of supports called struts and whalers to provide additional support to build the tunnel. Strut placement slows excavation because materials and equipment have to move around them. Due to tight site access, excavation progresses in a specific linear way to remove and transport soil to other parts of the corridor. The excavation extends about 15 to 20 feet below the water table, further slowing the process as it is more difficult to scoop and place saturated soils. Additionally, divers must check the sheet piles for gaps and make repairs as necessary. This all occurs in a work site that is only about 50 feet wide. Construction of the tunnel involves pouring concrete in six different phases, each needing time to cure before the next phase of work can start. Once excavation is completed in a cell, a concrete tremie seal ranging from 4 to 10 feet in thickness is poured underwater to create an anchor for the tunnel structure and seals off the excavation from groundwater so the tunnel can be constructed in dry conditions. After the water is removed from the cell, the sheet piles are sprayed with concrete to create a uniform surface. A layer of concrete is poured on top of the rough tremi surface to create a level surface for tunnel construction. The struts and whalers are removed and a concrete slab is poured to create the tunnel floor which will serve as the final surface for the track bed and rails. The tunnel walls and ceiling are poured in one concrete pour in about 30 foot long segments. A final topping layer of concrete is then poured. The finished tunnel includes a waterproof membrane to prevent water from entering the finished tunnel and steel rebar to make it structurally sound. The access constraints limit the opportunity to work simultaneously in multiple cells. There is generally only one concrete pour that can take place on a day. This is more challenging because of the inability to access the tunnel site from the west end of the corridor due to the construction of the secant pile wall adjacent to the Cedar Isle condos. As the work progresses across the parkway, about one cell is completed per month. Project staff remain committed to providing frequent updates to the community regarding this work. For the most up-to-date project information, please visit greenlineext.org.